Good morning, everyone. Are you ready to worship? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's stand, please. This is not a coincidence. You will find out later. Because this, this chorus was picked out probably 60 days ago. But the ladies are also singing this morning the actual song. If that doesn't tell you that God's in control, nothing will. So this morning, let's sing through this chorus, Sanctuary, a couple of times. <clears throat> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. you have in store this morning. Lord, we just ask you to prepare our hearts, our minds, our ears. Lord, that we may receive the wonderful blessings through music, through your word. Lord, we thank you for your presence this morning. We just lift up those that are unable to be with us this morning for whatever reason. Lord, as we continue, Lord, just, just continue to be with us as we sing praises unto you, our most high God. In your sweet name I pray. Amen. Hymn number 107. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. You may be seated. Hymn number 106. Hymn number 106. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Praise Him, praise Him, and in joyful song. 
and priest and king, Christ is coming over the world victorious, power and glory unto the Lord belong, praise him, praise him, his excellent greatness, praise him, praise him, every joyful song. This evening we are having fifth Sunday Sing and share and testimony. It's not just singing. So be become prepared to be called on. <laughs> and if you have any special music, any favorite hymns, be thinking about them this afternoon. Not during the service today. After we leave today, be thinking about those. And this evening, let's come and again share our praise and testimony to our Lord. Hymn number 289, hymn number 289. There shall be showers of blessing, this is a promise of love. Showers we breathe, there shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round the sun fall. But for the showers we breathe, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and I'll honor your word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we breathe, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now is to God we're confessing. Now is on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops from us are falling. Showers we please. How many came here this morning waiting for showers of blessings to fall on you? That's what the Lord desires is to give us blessings, but we've got to be ready <clears throat> to receive them. Lost my page. Hymn number 201. Would you stand, please? This is our operatory hymn. <clears throat> Grace of a loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our gear. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpour. i 
It was grace that bought my liberty. He looked beyond my fault, my fault, and saw my need. It's an amazing song. Hymn number 251. <clears throat> Let 
sunshine feeling in was born with brown a cloud between breathe on me breathe on me holy spirit breathe on me take thou my heart cleanse every part holy spirit breathe on me holy spirit breathe on me my stubborn will subdue teach me
In his book, Erwin Lutzer writes, When I was a professor at Moody Bible Institute, my secretary, a young woman of 21, was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer. But our hopes rose with the new drug that seemingly worked a miracle. Many of us picked up her optimism, believing and praying that she would overcome the disease. But a few months later, she died. At her funeral, I remember thinking, why did God raise our hopes only to let them be dashed in pieces? Disappointment, the sense of being let down by life and indeed by God, leaves so many people with their dreams destroyed. A mother said these words, Long ago I've given up on prayer. I prayed to God and asked that my daughter would become a missionary and now she's married to an unbeliever. I'm never going to bother God with another request again because it hurts so much when you're disappointed by God. Behind most of our disappointment lies the painful knowledge that things would have been different, we believe, if God had only intervened. And probably if you ask some unbeliever why they disbelieve, most likely would tell you that because somewhere in their past, They had a disappointment with God. Have you ever thought if He can do whatever He wishes, why don't He just make all the wrong things right in our world? What good is God if He does not make ruined things better? We're going to see a story of two people who are close followers and who were very, matter of fact, very, very disappointed with God. If you'll listen and take all of this in, I know that you're going to find something that's going to help us in this very, very discouraging day in which we live. So I'm going to invite you, if you will, to stand with me reverently to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Is it? Luke chapter 24, verse number 13. And behold, two of them when went out the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they walked, or excuse me, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus Himself drew near and went with them. Look at verse 16. And their eyes were holden that they should not know Him. In other words, they didn't know who Jesus was. Okay, look at verse 17. And they said unto them, excuse me, and He said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have said one to another as you walk? Are you sad? Verse 18 says it this way. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, 
answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass? Look at this. These days? Now, if you know your Bible, you know this is the last chapter in the Gospel of Luke. So guess what happens in the last chapter in the Gospel of Luke? Jesus rises again. Wait a minute. This is Easter Sunday, all right? Jesus rises again. All right. But here are two individuals and they're talking and they don't understand what's going on because let's just break it down so you can understand it and so I can get understand it. They are simply disappointed with God. Why? Because Jesus is dead and that was all they knew. There is no other reason that they are to have any sunshine again. Jesus is dead. He's gone from them. He, he, we put all of our promises on this man called Jesus of Nazareth, this, uh, this great teacher, this great orator. And now all of a sudden he's taken out of our place, out of our path. And we, we, we trusted him in a great deal, but now he's gone and there's no hope for the world. And by the way, those same sentiments are being said in our day. We're, we're hearing those same sentences now. Where is God? He, he's not even in, in Portland. He's not even in Seattle. He's not even in uh, Wisconsin. Where is God? We're just quite frankly disappointed with God because if He was who He said He was, all of this nonsense wouldn't happen and all he had, all he would have to do is make good things happen. And I don't understand it, preacher. Quite frankly, there's just, there's just not much good happening. So because of that, I'm just disappointed. Won't you examine your own life just for a moment? And I want to ask you a genuine question that I heard the other day, and I can't get it out of my mind. So simple. And I know how you're going to respond. You're going to, you're going to respond just like I did when I heard it. And at that time, I thought it was... No, what difference does it make? It's just a kind of a silly question. But I want you to answer this question in your heart, not out loud, but I want you to answer it in your heart because when you answer it the way that I think you're going to answer it, I'm going to see it on your face this morning. Are you ready for the question? I know you're ready for the question because you're tired of standing. I know, okay? And here it is. Three words. Are you happy? It's not a quick it's not a trick question this morning. Are you happy? We're finding in our world today, Christians are not happy. You see, what's happened to them in the past, we know what God did for us there, but quite frankly, we just can't see God moving here. And quite frankly, preacher, I just can't see the road ahead of me. It's going to be much better than what it is now. And I'm going to ask you that question one more time. Are you happy? Well, preacher, there's just nothing. All right, all right, I know. I know. But before you get ahead of me, would you do your very best to listen to this message? And let's just see if we can't just draw some truths that will help all of us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time that we are gathered Lord, every week I vow never to waste our people's time with things that do, do, does not benefit and, Father, that does not honor You. Father, we have come here this morning one, wondering some things in our own heart. But, Father, I pray that You'll illumine this Scripture for us this morning in a wonderful way. Father, we're honored to be here as Brother Randy so adequately stated. Father, please give us exactly what we need for this hour. We give you the praise and the credit and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. As we said that Jesus is now died on the cross and 
Even though Jesus had tried to prepare the hearts of his followers, it was a story they could not understand. If Jesus was not in the tomb, then who took him and why? And where was his body? At this point, it was hard to defend the tale of a resurrection. They would need more proof. His body was gone, but someone must have stolen him away. Now, before you start thinking about lunch today, can I show you something that 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 I have missed and I learned this week? Would you would you want to learn something genuinely? I want to show you something. I want you to mark something in your Bibles in John chapter 19 because you're not going to believe it. You're absolutely not going to believe this. I've read this probably four, five, six hundred times and something just dawned on me. Now, back in our story, when we read Luke chapter 24, everybody look up here right quick. When we read Luke chapter 24, there were two people on that Emmaus road. It identified one of them as Cleopas. We, we, we get that. But who was the other on that road with Cle- Cle- Cleopas? That's what I wanted to know. So here's, here's something I want you to see. Now Jesus is at the cross. Watch. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, His mother. Now wait, wait, look at the punctuation in this verse. Everybody look at the punctuation. There was Jesus on the cross. There was His mother, a comma. Now wait a minute. And his mother's, wait, comma, Mary, the wife of, so guess what? Guess who was at the cross watching Jesus die? It was Cleopas' wife. Guess who I'm just going to tell you was on the Emmaus road with Cleopas. Wait, wait, wait. Guess who was on the Emmaus road with Cleopas? His wife. Mary is the sister of Mary. Many people believe this was her half-sister. So nevertheless, I, 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 I don't think anybody's getting this. Come on with me. Are you getting this? So here was the wife of Cleopas, with Cleopas was on the road to Emmaus with his wife Mary. She was supposedly, historians tell us, the half-sister of the mother of the Lord. So if anybody knew that Jesus was dead, guess who knew it? It was Mary, Cleopas' wife, who was on the road to Emmaus. So there was no doubt in their mind, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There was no doubt in her mind, Jesus was dead. Why? It's because she was at the foot of the cross with her half-sister or sister, watching Jesus die, and Jesus made these pronouncements from the cross, and He said these words, It is finished! Which means, I have completed everything God sent me to do. So they knew that Jesus was dead. Are are we with the program? So now this story, I hope, takes on a new character for you. Now, we, we get this. So Cleopas had a wife. We get all of that. They were going to a little town of Emmaus. Write this in the margin of your Bible. The word Emmaus literally means warm springs. It literally means warm springs. Emmaus was about seven miles from Jerusalem. So notice uh, Luke chapter 24, verse number 15. Luke chapter 24 and uh, verse 15. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, now watch this, Jesus Himself drew near and they went with them. Now wait a minute. And He went with them, but their eyes were holding they could not know Him. So suddenly a stranger comes along uh, side of this couple. We know him as Jesus. But this couple did not know who Jesus was at this time. Look at verse number 17. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another? As you walk, and look what Jesus just told them. Watch. 
Look at these last three words of verse 17. And are sad. You know what Jesus literally told this couple? Why are you down in the dumps? I thought that was appropriate for our hour. Church, look at your preacher. Why are you down in the dumps? We win! We win! The devil can't defeat us. We are the church triumphant. We win! We win! You win! You're going to be with Christ! We win! Amen. Why are you down in the dumps? I love that. Look at verse number 18. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him. Now, this is interesting. They're talking to Jesus. Didn't know it was Jesus. Look what Cleopas said. Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast not known the things which come to pass there in these days? Wait a minute. You know what he's talking about, don't you? He's talking about the crucifixion. You mean to tell me that you've been around Jerusalem this last week and you ain't even heard... Excuse me, ain't's not a good word. You haven't heard the story about what's going on? How can you not be down in the dumps? Jesus, the, the, the man we counted on to be our Messiah, is dead. And why are you asking me this stupid question? Look at what he said. Not knowing all the things that are going to pass in these days. Look at verse number 19. And he said unto them, Look, now, now stay with me because I want to point something out to you. And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, now here is something where your faith gets a little weak. Are you watching with me this morning? I just want you to see it from the scripture. I'm not going, I'm not adding anything to the scripture. Look what they says. Which was. Stop right there a minute. You know what they said? He was, but he ain't no more. You see, we counted on him, but, but, but he's not even here anymore. Now look at this. He was a mighty prophet indeed, and the world before God and all the people, but he was. He's not here. He, he's a has been now. He, if he'd have been who he said he was, it had never been to this. It had never come to this. What, what do you mean? This Jesus who we loved and who we counted on, he's gone. He was. He was. He was. You know the reason why you and I get disappointed with God? Let me give you a clue. It's because we get in our thinking that Jesus was a was. You see anybody follow me? See, He used, as long as I got Jesus on my pull cord, and as long as He makes me happy, my bank account's full, and as long as I just get everything I want from Jesus, then everything's cool. But you see, when I get dissatisfied with God and when a little bit of problems come my way and when I start having all of these personal issues or financial issues or work issues, then He was a was. You mark it down, my friend, and you look at your life. If you're sitting where you're sitting this morning and you're disappointed with God, there has been some time or another that you believe that He was a was. Instead of a mighty prophet indeed. May I suggest to you this morning, He is a mighty prophet. Now, let me prove something to you. Are you still awake? I know it's been a hard week. Are you still awake with me? I want to show you something. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want you to go over to Revelation, if you will. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. I want you to see this. And I want you to look at this. Now, Christ, here's Christ, here's Jesus. I am He that liveth. Yes, we know that. And look at this. Look at this statement. Ah! Suddenly your disappointment gets a little bit better when you realize, look, He's not a was anymore. Are, are you getting this? In your mind, He used to be a was. Jesus says, I'm not a was anymore. I like this. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Somebody needs to say that with me this morning. I'm alive. I'm alive. See, that's what Christ wants you to understand. He's not a was. He's not a was. No, 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 no. And have the keys of hell and death. 
You see, at one time, Satan thought he had the keys. May I suggest to you who's jingling the keys in heaven today? And it ain't the devil. You see, when we get disappointed with God, we believe he was a was. Now he says, are you seeing this? All right. See, I learned something. I just want to pass that on to you. Now, this husband and wife team, they they felt let down. All their hope was on Jesus. And now he's out of the picture. Truth be told, the disappointment of these two were deeper because in their minds, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Jesus failed to live up to their expectations. They felt betrayed by someone they loved. Their hurt ran deep because their love ran deep. He gave them big dreams and now they felt that Jesus was not coming through. And no doubt these followers saw Jesus do some great miracles. And now how could Jesus allow the Romans to kill him? They had just come through an emotional roller coaster. And now in their minds, life would never be the same again. The preceding months had been packed with preaching, teaching, miracles. No man spake like he did. Someone needs this. Even though you might feel, feel betrayed by someone close to you, or you feel like someone really disappointed you, and you feel like giving up, and what difference does it make for you now? Listen to this. Someone w- once wrote this of the Lord. He takes no dreams from us that He does not return. He raises no hopes that He does not fulfill. And He gives us no longings that shall not be satisfied. Beloved, I want to tell you, somebody in this room needs to get to this point this morning before you leave. He's not a was anymore. The answer for those discouraged is something you're about to see. We are about to see how Jesus walked side by side with this couple. And can I tell you something that I've learned this last week? He is side by side with us as well. Now, let me skip this stuff here. Let me draw you to something else before we close. Luke chapter 24, 20, 24, 22. 24, 22. Now, we're going to eavesdrop on a conversation between this stranger and this disappointed couple. So let's just hear their hearts and sh- and let's see what's going on. Yea, and a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which were at the sepulcher, and they found not his body, and they came saying, they had seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were went to the the sepulcher and found it even as a woman had said, but they saw him not. Now, we know this. This was a story that sum up to where they are. Here they are speaking about the woman, women going to the tomb and how his body wasn't there and how these... Now watch this. If, let's place ourselves in this couple's spot. They heard a story and the story went like this. Watch, everybody watch. The story went like this. The women went to the tomb. One of them by, my, by the name of Mary Magdalene. And are you really going to believe her because you know what her past was? She had some devils cast out of her. You know what she's saying now? Come on, look, look, look. You know what she's saying? That Jesus is a rose from the dead. Why? It's because we've seen angels telling us. Now, wait a minute. Mary, 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 Mary. Now, Mary, you know, your past doesn't really lend credence to what you're telling us because we know what you were. And now you're telling us that all of this this, this, this stuff about you're seeing angels and Jesus rose from the dead... Come on, do you really expect us to believe that? You, listen, Mary, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to tell us something better than that if we're going to believe that. Because I want to tell you, this angels and, and all of this, but look, really, really, it's true, it's true. These are discouraged di- disciples here. Mary's brother, the, the Mary's sister, and her husband... And they're walking alone. Jesus is talking to them. They don't know Jesus. They're recounting everything that they're going through because they're down in the dumps. I'm looking at some people this morning. You're way past down in the dumps. We're going to have to find a shovel somewhere today and dig to find you. You're so far down. So the story didn't even seem to make sense. 
what they're telling Jesus. Now, I want to show you something else. Look at verse 25. And he said unto them, now, guess who's speaking? This is Christ. O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ have suffered these things at the enter into his glory? And be, now watch this, watch this. If you don't love anything about anything else I've said, now watch this. And beginning, I love this, I love this, at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in the scriptures the things concerning, guess who? Himself. So wait a minute. Jesus went back to the Old Testament and started preaching to this couple from Moses all the way through the prophets. Things concerning Him. So would that give us credence to say that Jesus' story was even in the Old Testament? Come on. So would you believe to be told that Jesus' life story was even foretold before He even got to the cross? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it means. Now, Here's where you and I come into the picture. Here's where you came to... Here, here's the reason you walked in the doors this morning. Are you ready? Here it is. Jesus found these two people going to Emmaus, seven miles, getting out of the way, discouraged. Jesus, after He rose from the dead, came to just two people. Wait! What difference does it make about these two people? They're just two ordinary people. Listen, Jesus is rose from the dead, so He ought to appear on a mountain with His hands outstretched to say, Here am I! No, 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 no. No. He appeared to these two discouraged people in the midst of their sorrow. You know what that speaks to us? Right in the midst where you are. He can speak to you. Isn't that a problem? Two people, two common, ordinary, out of the way people. This husband and wife team was just talking. And Jesus comes along and says, why are you down in the dumps? Well, hey guy, don't you understand? This prophet is dead. And Jesus starts going back to the Old Testament and He starts preaching to them the things concerning Himself. Can you imagine? Maybe, maybe He went back to Genesis 3.15 to tell them the, 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 the seed of the woman shall crush Satan's head. Amen. Maybe He went to where Isaac, uh, Abraham offered Isaac. Maybe He told them that story. Somebody say Amen. Maybe He went to Exodus chapter 12 about the blood on the doorpost. Do you remember that story? Maybe Jesus told them the Passover story. Maybe He went to Psalms 22 where the Word says, My God, My God, why hast Thou forsaken Me? A reference to Christ dying on the cross. And then maybe, maybe Kaylin, He went to Isaiah chapter 53, one of the greatest chapters in all of creation, to talk about His death on the cross. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't get anything else, Read Isaiah chapter 53. Maybe Jesus on that road to Emmaus pulled that Scripture out and says, let me tell you, I was wounded for your transgressions. He was preached. He preached to these ordinary people. From Moses, the Bible says, all the way through the prophets. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm just amazing. That had to be one well of a sermon. I bet you nobody on that road went to sleep like some of you are. I bet you, I bet you nobody thought when they were talking to Christ or this stranger, I bet nobody thought, well, I wish he would hurry. My head hurts, don't he? No. And I bet you they didn't say, I am so tired. I'm sleepy. I wish he'd hurry. No, I bet they didn't say that about Jesus. For I bet you they said, bring it on. There was something about His words. There was something about His words, and I'm going to prove it to you here in a minute. Are you still awake? Watch this. Luke chapter 24, verse 29. Oh, this speaks good. But they constrained Him, saying, 
abide with us. For it is toward evening and, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. You see, the stranger intrigues them, but they still don't recognize him. They knew he was special by the way he explained Scripture. But watch what happens next. Verse number 30. It changes his whole story. Look at verse number 30. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Now, watch. I, I want everybody to look up here. I know I know some of you are praying. I, I, I'll, I'll just say you're praying. I know some of you are praying, but everybody look up here. I want you to see this. Look at verse number 30. This should not have occurred. This is, this is, this is a, this is one of those customs that's a no, no. Back in the Middle East. I'm going to prove it to you. And it came to pass, he said to me, he took bread, blessed it, and break it and gave it to them. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. What's so significant about this? Jesus was walking with them. Come on, watch. This couple should have been the host. But now, Jesus assumes the role of the host. Are you following me with this? Jesus took the bread. No, he said, this is my life. I know what it felt like. I know when they ripped my skin off my body. He break that body. Pop, you ever wonder when he, when he did that? If, what he was thinking? Just a few short hours ago, they flailed him like a wild animal. And they broke him and bruised him. And he took the bread, symbolized his body, and blessed it. Break it. Oh, what a picture that is. What a picture that is. So here we see the Savior of the world becoming the host. That simply did not happen in these days. Look at verse number 31. Oh, I love this verse. And their eyes were opened. <laughs> and they finally knew Him. And He vanished out of their sight. This couple, this one ordinary couple had a moment with the Lord. He preached to them the greatest truths about the greatest message, about the greatest moment, and the greatest miracle. All for this one couple. And the Bible says they knew Him. Now wait a minute. What, what difference did it make? How, how did they finally know Him? That was my question. Did, 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 did all of a sudden it make sense? I just wonder if, this is a personal opinion, I just wonder if it was the way he took that bread and he break it. And then they said, that's got to be Jesus. Nobody. Nobody does it like him. Nobody does it like Jesus. So he got the bread. And they knew. Wait a minute. They didn't know some things. They didn't know everything. But here's what they knew. They knew Him. And can I tell you? That's why we're here this morning. So that you and I could know Him. Can we go just a little bit more and then I'm done? Look at verse 32. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn with us while He talked with us by the way? Here's our testimony. While He opened to us the Scriptures. And they arose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And found the eleven gathered together and that were with him. Now wait a minute. The Bible says their heart burned. They had a holy heartburn. Why? Because Jesus, the resurrected Christ, had spoke to them. 
Some of the greatest words that ever been spoken in history. And I know you probably didn't get it, so I'm just going to remind you one more time. The Bible says in verse number 32 and 33, and they rose up that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch. They were on their way to Emmaus. And Emmaus to Jerusalem, about seven miles. They got good news. And guess what they're going to do with good news? They're going to run right back to Jerusalem. That's seven miles. And I'm going to tell you, I bet you they didn't walk like this. No, 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 no. I don't know how fast Mr. Cleopas was and don't know how fast Mary was, but I just imagine they got there in record time. Because here's what they knew. You know this story about these dancing angels telling me Jesus is is alive? I can't buy that. But now they had an encounter. Now they understand it. And now, watch, 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 they're going to share the good news. which might make a personal application to you. You have the good news. You have the good news. And how eager are you to run ahead and share that with somebody in our culture today? I just think about them on that road going, (laughs) now, their message has changed a little bit because look at verse 34. The Lord is risen! Wait a minute. They didn't buy that just a few moments ago. And that appeared to Simon and they told all things were done in the way. What does that mean? They was telling Simon. They was telling Peter. Hey, Peter, guess what? Jesus is alive. Now, why do you think it was important to Peter? Can, can I just tell you? I don't know this. I'm just telling you. Is because Peter blew it. And now he's got a further witness. This husband and wife team saying, now look, Peter, I don't, I, I, you may be down in the dumps and that's where we were, but I'm going to tell you, Jesus ain't a was anymore. Jesus is alive. Wow. My friend, I don't know about you, but that's absolutely incredible. Now look at, if you will, <laughs> Uh, verse 35, the Lord is risen and appeared, and they told what things were done in the way, what Jesus preached to them. Now the disappointment was all gone. Now, I want to put all this in the capsule and I'm done. But I want to retrace something because somebody in this room needs to hear this. I just want to retrace just for a little bit. Because I want you to go back to verse 29 of that chapter. Luke chapter uh, 24, verse number 29. And I want to show you something very fascinating. Now watch this. But they constrained him or Jesus saying, Abide with us. Of course, toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went with them. Now, stay with me here. The Bible says this. Abide with us is what they told Jesus. Jesus would have kept on going if they had not urged him to stay. Listen to me. There's somebody in this room, you keep trifling with Christ. It's time for somebody in this room to ask Jesus to stay. It's time for you to say, enough of this old stuff, enough of this, all all I'm dealing with now. I'm sick and tired of it. See, Jesus is walking by you right now. It's time for you to reach out and grab Him and ask Him to stay. Matter of fact, I think Revelation 3.20 says it better than I can say it. Look what the John, the beloved, wrote. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, and here's your cue. Here's what you have to do. And open the door. When Jesus says, I will, you can count on it. I will come unto him or you and will sup with him or you and he with me. Again, Jesus says, if you open up the door, I will come and be the host. Now, that's it. That's my notes. But now, what do you get to do? You can sit there like this doesn't mean anything to you or you can say, Jesus, 
I feel like that I needed some encouragement. And I, and I am inviting you to come my way. Even in those most difficult moments, He's present with you. Do you recognize Him this morning? Do you want Him this morning? Father, I pray, Lord, in the quietness of this room that You would do something phenomenal in a human heart. Preachers can't change hearts, but You can. Father, the only thing I can do is point people towards You. And Lord, that's the decision that's left up to them. But Father, we saw in this story so vividly how these people were so disappointed and You walked right alongside of them and restored them to personal health and happiness. There may be somebody that's been down in the dumps lately. You can't see your past, see your way past a certain circumstance or situation that has hindered your life for years. As a matter of fact, if you are honest, you still go back to those same habits time after time after time. You have tried to rebuke the devil. You've tried to call your habits names. You've fed up with it. You're sorry about it. You repent of it. And then you go right back to it. Father, I would pray there's somebody with enough courage in this room that would step out and say, God, I need, I need your encouragement this morning. Would you stand with me all over the room and only if the Holy Spirit bids you, would you come and declare what Christ could do for you and will do. Brother Randy, would you sing this first verse? Yeah.